Hello and welcome, this is Jeremy from Legal Studies Advantage. In this video I'd like to provide you with a brief overview to the subject of Federal Civil Procedure. Number 1. Overview. Federal Civil Procedure deals with the process and rules by which a case is litigated in a federal court. Number 2. Does the court have power to hear and resolve the case? To be able to hear and resolve the case, the court must have power over the parties involved in the case. Oftentimes we're focused on the power of the court over the defendant, but that also applies to the plaintiff. The court must also have power over the subject matter of the case and be located in an acceptable place. These ideas are referred to as personal jurisdiction, subject matter jurisdiction over the case, and proper venue, respectively. Number three, who are all the parties and what are all the issues in the case? In the course of a given case, additional parties may be added by permissive party joinder, mandatory party joinder, impleter, or intervention. Also, additional claims may be added to a case as long as they fall under the subject matter jurisdiction of the court. These claims may be added through procedural devices such as cross-claims, compulsory counterclaims, and permissive counterclaims. Interpleader is another procedural device for resolving ownership issues among parties. Also, different types of class action suits represent the interests of entire classes of people. Number four. How do the parties find out what the case is about? Parties set forth claims, defenses, and evidence through service of process, exchanging pleadings, and engaging in discovery. Pleadings are documents setting forth the claims and defenses of the parties. They include the complaint, motions, and the answer. These documents also request actions by the court. Discovery includes five primary tools for gathering evidence about a case. These tools require opposing parties and other individuals to provide requested evidence and so forth. They are depositions, requests to produce, interrogatories, physical or mental examinations, and requests for admission. Number five, what events make up the case? Several possible things can happen at each stage of a case, pretrial, trial, and post-trial. Pretrial procedural events may include voluntary dismissal, default judgment, 12b6 motion to dismiss for failure to state a claim, motion for judgment on the pleadings, motion for summary judgment, and pretrial conferences. At trial, procedural events may include jury selection by the process of voir dire, motion for judgment as a matter of law, and other events. Post-trial procedural events may include renewed motion for judgment as a matter of law, motion for new trial, and appeal of a final judgment. Number six, what claims and issues are settled following completion of a case? Claim and issue preclusion are key subjects to understand here. After the final judgment of a case has been entered, certain claims for remedies and issues, legal or factual questions, are not allowed to be relitigated. They are deemed to be fully resolved. An old claim can't be raised again, and a new claim relying upon an old issue does not need to relitigate the issue again, but can rely upon the issue's answer from the prior case. That concludes our brief overview to the subject of civil procedure. Please visit www.1lsuccess.com or www.legalstudiesadvantage.com for more information about how our 1L Success Package can help you to succeed in law school. Again, that's www.1lsuccess.com with the number 1 or www.legalstudiesadvantage.com. Legal Studies Advantage, LLC. Reinventing Legal Education.